I recently published a number of videos on the Smith chart, including how to design an impedance matching network using the Smith chart. Now, of course, in, in order to do this, you need to know the complex impedance of the device that you want to match. One problem that many people run into is that some of the very common antenna analyzers that are out there, like this MFJ259B, don't tell you the sign of the reactive component. In other words, they don't tell you whether X is positive or inductive, or if X is negative or capacitive. So how do we determine what that is? The one very common method that you'll see written up is to uh, increase the measurement frequency slightly and note what happens to the reactive component. If it increases, then it's inductive or positive. If it decreases as you increase the frequency, then it's capacitive or negative. The problem is, this isn't always true. In fact, it does not apply when you're measuring an antenna or a load through a transmission line, because the transmission line will uh, do some transformations on the impedance. So if we can't follow this method uh, when measuring uh, a load through a transmission line, what do we do? Now the answer, of course, is Smith chart to the rescue, using a very simple process. We make three measurements of the resistive and reactive components at three frequencies in increasing order. And we plot these on the Smith chart twice, once for each sine of x, and then connect each of these sets of three points with a curve. So we wind up with two curves on Smith chart. Now the sign that results in an arc that rotates clockwise as the frequency increases is the correct one. This is simply just a very convenient uh, property of the math behind the Smith chart. So let's go run an example and show you how it works. I've got a transmission line and a complex load connected to my analyzer here. So let's make uh, three measurements. At uh, 4 megahertz, the resistive part is uh, 49 ohms and the reactive part is 19 ohms. Let's adjust up to say 4.2 megahertz and uh, we'll record 59 ohms and 26 ohms reactive and then if we go to 4.4 megahertz uh, we'll record uh, 64 ohms and 46 ohms reactive. Now of course if we followed this uh, method up here the increasing value of X as frequency increases would tell us that this is an inductive load. Uh, let's go see if that's true. Now, of course, in order to plot uh, these values on the Smith chart, we've got to normalize them to our system impedance of 50 ohms. So that's simply taking each of these values and dividing them by 50. And I just finished completing those. So these are the values that we're going to plot on the Smith chart. We'll start off with a 0.98 and 0.38. So 0.98 in the real axis is going to be really close to this unity circle. And the 0.38, let's start with the positive one, is going to be very close to the 0.4. So our first point is right here. And then to plot the negative version of that, we go down here and plot down here for a negative 0.38. So those are our first two points. Okay, with the remaining points plotted, we can now kind of connect these up with a curve. And this one curve goes this way. And again, the frequency is increasing in this direction here. Okay. And the other curve goes down in this direction, this way. Okay. And in that case, the frequency is increasing in that direction. Now, if we take a look at these two curves, this is the one that's going in a clockwise direction. This one is rotating in a counterclockwise direction. So that's not the right answer. And this tells us that the X component here is indeed negative, meaning that it is capacitive. We're on the lower half of the Smith chart. And just to so, be sure we've got it right, I will plot the Smith chart uh, here on my uh, Rig Expert antenna analyzer. And this one will actually show us uh, the curve. And indeed, uh, the Smith chart is showing that our curve is here on the capacitive side, and uh, the X component is indeed capacitive. And there you have it. If your analyzer is like this MFJ259B, and does not give you the sign of the reactive component, you can follow this simple process and determine that for sure by yourself. Now thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And of course, tell your friends. Thanks again for watching and look forward to all your comments. Thank you.